All right, so former Deputy Secretary of Defense under George W. Bush, Ambassador Paul Wolfowitz. Ambassador, very good to have you back. What do you think of what he's saying? Go slow, go slow. I think he's absolutely right. I mean, I think the main hope out of this is that something more will result later and something better will result later. But that list of people who are pleased by this meeting, obviously Kim Jong-un loves it, the Chinese love it, the left-leaning president of South Korea who helped engineer it loves it. I don't think the Japanese are terribly happy. I don't think the South Koreans who count on America for its defense are happy. And I'm quite sure that that North Korean refugee who was so wisely applauded at the State of the Union message who lost both his legs in escaping from North Korean prisons is not going to be very happy either. Well, we don't know all the details yet or how we, we move forward here, but uh, what did you think, let's go issue at a time, with the president offering to halt these joint military exercises with the South Koreans? Look, let's keep emphasizing we don't know, we don't know what the details of what may have been agreed already. Right. And we certainly don't, don't know the details of what's going to happen and follow on negotiations. I just think an enormous amount depends on the follow on. And I'm afraid that this canceling of the exercise, and probably permanently, my guess, uh, if we don't do it in acquiescing to North Koreans, the South Koreans will ask us to do it. The atmospherics of the whole situation are going to prematurely, in my view, weaken and reduce the American defense commitment to South Korea. Look, the way to end this confrontation in the peninsula has been simple and clear for years, which is for North Korea to take steps to end the incredible military buildup they have on the South Korean demilitarized zone. There's not a whisper of that anywhere. It's all about us and about our exercises. You know what is kind of weird? I look at things in maybe a business prism. I can talk to so many CEOs. Uh, and, and one other thing I realize, if I'm North Korea, why would I give up the bargaining chit that has got me to the table in the first place? Because once I'm denuclearized, I don't have anything on anyone. Look, I think that's why denuclearization is going to take a very long time. It's going to be under their very broad definition that it has to include the end of the U.S guarantee of South Korea's security. That's what they mean when they say complete denuclearization. There was nothing in there about complete, verifiable, and irreversible, the words that we like. Uh, it's their concept, which is a different one. And I think it's true that they see this as leverage, which has gotten them a historic meeting with the President of the United States. They never had that before, without any other countries present, without South Korea even present, except in the shadows, so to speak. So yeah, I think, I think Frankly, I think the greater hope would be that we get some real reduction in the North Korean conventional threat to South Korea, and then we could begin to see a real change in the confrontational atmosphere in the peninsula. But I don't see that happening, unfortunately. That would be where I would try to go. You know, Ambassador, uh, when I talk to a number of Clinton folks, of course, who argue that when they struck a deal with the Koreans without a presidential level meeting, um, it did keep an agreement intact for, for a number of years, I believe about eight years, before the North Koreans started cheating. But cheat, they did. Now, the defense for that coming back is they say that in the end they had far fewer of nuclear weapons than they would have had otherwise. Uh, is that what this comes down to, that we recognize the fact that they cheat? We maybe even recognize the fact that they lie, but we'll still end up being better off because they won't have as much of this stuff as they would if they weren't addressed at all. Look, I think the threat comes from their having even modest amounts of nuclear weapons, even ones that just threaten our South Korean allies and our Japanese allies, which is why I think the Japanese are concerned that this might be a deal that protects the United States but doesn't help them at all. Look, the heart of the matter is they have a military buildup on South Korea's border that shouldn't be there is totally unnecessary. It is a drain on what sort of an economy they actually have. So I would say the really hopeful sign would be if they were actually contemplating the kind of economic reforms that Deng Xiaoping undertook in China. And they talk about that. The Chinese say that's what they have in mind, but I'm skeptical, unfortunately. You know, many ambassadors pointed to the son here, uh, Kim Jong-un, very different than his father, very different than his grandfather, and maybe changed by just the lights of Singapore or the, the travels of late um, and, uh, you know, coming from a country that's pitch dark at night. 
and, and just wanting to be part of that, part of that excitement, part of humanity. And, and uh, it sounds a little fuzzy and all of that, but, but that alone is what's going on here. His, his sudden walkabout, you know, in the streets of Singapore uh, the other night, his taking selfies, uh, that sort of thing, that we have not factored in a young leader's desire not to follow in, in the, the solitary ways of his father and grandfather. Look, it's possible, and certainly you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see that North Korea could be much better off with a different kind of system. Sure. And this guy, after all, went to school in Europe, so he saw it firsthand in that way also. I think Switzerland, actually, which is You're a right. pretty good example. But um, the problem for him or for anyone who wants to do that for him personally, he has to basically disown his father and his grandfather and say that all the misery they put the North Korean people through was unnecessary and was a waste. And that's going to be very hard. And the other thing is his regime depends on this ghastly repression with over 100,000 people probably in concentration camps. And even the ones who aren't there live in constant fear of being sent with their families to camps. It's so repressive, I'm not sure that he can afford to let the pressure up at all to allow people to move freely, to communicate freely, to emigrate freely. I don't think that's in his agenda. But it is better still to talk than not, is it not? I agree with that. Maybe yeah. talking will get us there. And that, look, I do believe the goal should be not just to be so narrowly focused on nuclear weapons, but to be focused on genuine reform in North Korea that would include reducing their insane military burden I wouldn't mind if we got some real progress on that and then worked on nuclear weapons later, but uh, I'm skeptical that what we've got out of this summit is anything more than a big plus for Kim Jong-un. Who, after all, will tell ahead. his people, don't, don't bother resisting me because I have the whole world with me, as you can see, including the United States. That's an interesting read. Ambassador, thank you very, very much. Good seeing you. Thank you.